Or you can read in your book. Ready? Go. It's our fluffy chick do not I like how some of you are reading in your text and others were tracking the screen with Mrs. Klein. So you had your choice of which way you wanted to do it. I love that. And I like the fact you were focusing. So I'm Amy Klein and I'm a kindergarten teacher. The context of UDL that I applied in this lesson was really essentially reading comprehension. But it was a culmination of a very overarching large project in which we were hatching chicks and now our student, my students were researching about their chicks to find out how to take care of them. We're learning about researching a topic so we can share information. Why are we learning about researching a topic? So we can share information. Say, I'm researching so I can share information. I'm researching so I can share information. So my learning intention was we are learning about researching a topic. And the success criteria was I can identify my topic, I can uh, identify at least one key detail. I can share information with others, and I can write. I can write a sentence about my topic. How are we going to know we learned it? Because I can. One key detail. What else is another success criteria? How else will we know we learned it? I can identify at least one key detail. I can. I can identify the topic. Say, I can identify the topic. I can identify the topic. And I can write a sentence about my detail. So as I was planning the lesson and identifying barriers that might be, you know, in preventing some of my students from accessing the curriculum, I remember that I have to remember the barriers are in the environment and not in my learners. So some of the barriers that I identified were the vocabulary acquisition. You know, do they have that vocabulary? The curriculum, the text. Is it too difficult for some students? Language acquisition as far as how, what is the language level of my students? How long have they been in a US school? When did they start school with me? Whether they are a language learner or an English only learner, when did they start in my class? Now, what you're going to do now is you're going to think about your first detail you want to share with others. First detail you want to share with others right now. I'm going to give you 30 seconds of think time. And when we're doing think time, our voice level is? Zero. Share your detail with your partner. They need fresh baby food and fresh water. So as I was thinking about learner variability, uh, one of the things that really popped up was my prior knowledge and background knowledge that my students might have had. Um, just time of day and access to different tools that they might need to help them with the project, with the reading. How will they share the information with each other? You have three choices to show what you know about chicks. Google slide, poster, paragraph, what you're writing your sentences on our regular writing paper. After I thought about the learner variability, I really had to think of options to help my students and really give them full access to the project, to the lesson, to the, the curriculum. And so one of the things, you know, different things that I came up with when they're writing sentences, I have count, I supply them with counters. So they are able to use counters if they would like to, to build their sentence. That helps them not only to build their sentence, but also to make sure when they're writing every word is in their sentence, I supply my students with a word bank. Pictures and the word with it gives them that access. And this is supplied to everyone. Everyone has access to this, so there's no, no one, you know, if they need it, there's no judgment. They have, you know, they have alternate seating if they would prefer. They're able to choose how they want to present their information. They could choose to make a poster, they could do a Google slide, you know, a slide, which we call a one pager on a Google slide. They could choose to write a paragraph. However they wanted to present it, I gave them that choice. And they also were able to work with, even just as they were researching, and they're able to talk to a partner. I'd use a lot of cooperative learning, try to turn to your partner, tell your partner what you're learning, 
And so they're able to process the information, share with someone else, but also hear another student okay. talking to them. And that gives, takes away okay. some of that fear. It, it lowers the affective filter so that it's like, okay, I'm safe and I can, I can learn this and I know what I'm doing. When I give the students choices, it doesn't change the success criteria at all. It just allows them a different pathway to create the product. And it keeps us away from that single story. When the students have choice, they are a lot more engaged because they have chosen their activity. They've chosen the way, the pathway they're going to go in order to create and show what they know. You can write a sentence. So I want to see a sentence. What sentence are you going to write? It's a home for chicks. Then you go write, it's a home for chicks. And write all those words. Go use the counters if you need to. Okay, what's your topic? So my story models a um, very essential UDL core idea for me, which is what is essential for some is beneficial for all. UDL isn't just one more thing. It actually is just a change of mindset. It's seeing things that we don't always see, realizing that the barriers are not in our students. It's in the environment. So it's not extra. It's just really shifting our mind. They're really changing our mindset and trying to see what's out around us.